Today, we're going over how you can easily clip a subject from a video with the powerful Rotor Brush tool in After Effects. Make sure to join our Patreon to get a ton of perks, including a private VFX Masterminds chat where you can talk to other VFX artists. Link will be in the description below. In order to start using Rotor Brush, you'll need to double click the layer to open it up in the layer panel. The Rotor Brush tool won't work at the composite level, so you need to make sure that you're within the layer itself. The next thing you want to do is choose your base frame to start rotoing from. In this case, we're just going to start from the first frame of the clip. And then you want to ensure that two 2.0 is selected for the version and you want to select best for the quality. This is going to cause Rotor Brush to look at more pixels to get you a more accurate roto. So now you'll begin by making small brush strokes over the area that you want to roto. Focus on small detailed strokes and make sure to take your time here in the beginning. The way Rotor Brush works is it has a machine learning algorithm that bases each next frame on the previous frame. So the more time that you spend here on the base frame with a strong attention to detail, the better the roto is going to be on each next frame. If Rotor Brush accidentally selects a part of your background, all you have to do is hold down Alt or Option and then click and drag on the parts that you don't want to keep. If you hold down Control or Command and then click and drag, you can quickly change the size of your brush if you need to get into smaller crevices. Another thing that you can do is you can toggle through different view modes to get a better understanding of how the roto is doing. The modes are Toggle Alpha, which gives you a black and white alpha view, Toggle Alpha Boundary, which is the default view showing you a purple line indicating the edge of your roto, and Toggle Alpha Overlay, which gives you a colored background against your roto which you can change the color and opacity if you want. And over in the effects control panel you can adjust the feathering of your edge, the contrast which adjusts the overall hardness level, shift edge which will shrink or expand the edge, and reduce chatter which will help get rid of any weird digital jittering on the edge. And if your subject is moving a lot you can click to use motion blur, and if there's any weird color spill you can click decontaminate edge colors. In our case our subject really isn't moving a whole lot and there isn't any weird color spill that we need to worry about so we'll just leave those unchecked for now. Once you're happy with how your base frame is looking, it's time to now move through the timeline frame by frame by holding control or command left arrow and analyze each frame's edge. If you happen to notice any inconsistencies, just stop on those frames and make the necessary changes with the rotor brush and then repeat until every frame is consistent. Once that's done, move the playhead back to the beginning of the timeline and grab the refine edge tool by clicking and holding on the rotor brush tool up in the toolbar. Select the refine edge tool and using the same principles as before, start painting over the edge with small detailed brush strokes. This tool really comes in handy, especially especially in areas like hair that have extra fine detail. Once you're satisfied with your edge, you can refine it further with the refine edge map parameters that work similarly to the rotor brush map parameters. And now that we've completed our roto and edge refinement, we can finally hit the freeze button that will lock in our roto. And don't forget to save. If at any point going forward you notice a problem that needs to be fixed, you can simply go back into the layer panel, unfreeze the roto, make your adjustments on whatever frame needs fixing, and then refreeze.